one. So earlier today, the New York Knicks finally did what no one thought could be done and acquired OG Ananubi from the Toronto Raptors. Uh, this should have been long overdue, uh, yet Toronto kept trying to hold on to these guys for whatever reason. Now it looks like they're going to be looking to move Pascal Siakam as well. But here's the deal. Uh, so the New York Knicks are landing OG Ananubi, uh, Precious Chua, and Malachi Flynn, while Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, and a second round pick are headed to Toronto. So let's start with the Knicks side of things. Uh, first off, I think it's really weird that they traded RJ Barrett when they like refused to trade him for Donovan Mitchell, yet like the Knicks were like super high on Donovan Mitchell. I think part of that was they just believed that no one else was going to come in and swoop on Donovan Mitchell. I think that's what it was. I think that the Knicks just kind of got cocky and ultimately found out, <laughs> right? So I think this time they were kind of like, okay, this is the guy we want. Let's go get OG on a newbie. Perfect. We got him. Trade RJ. Whatever, right? Um, I know some people seem to be on the fence about like RJ and quickly. Um, I do think this was somewhat of a win-win for both sides. However, I do think the Raptors won this more, but we'll get into this. We'll get in the Raptor side of things here shortly. As far as the Knicks go, I do think that this was a great acquisition for uh, the Knicks, right? You don't, with you having RJ Barrett, I don't think he's ever really going to develop into the player that they need him to be because you have Jalen Brunson, right? And OG on a newbie, his ability to play off the ball, be a quality shooter. Now you also have that defender that can defend the best player on the other team. So I think that that kind of is another, is a better position of need. Um, you know, once everybody's healthy, my guess is that we're looking at something like, uh, you know, a Brunson. I think they should go with Hart at the two, just to give you that other point of attack defender, rebounder. Um, you know, shooting wise might be a little bit of problem, but OG on a newbie, Julius Randle, and then Robinson. It's probably my guess is how I think their best five would be constructed. Um, however, I look at this deal with OG on a newbie as a, there's got to be something else coming, right? Because if all they did, after all the talk, all the hype and everything, all the picks that they have, all, all the, just the assets that they've been looking to stockpile for that big blockbuster move, if all they do is come away with OG on an Ubi, I don't think that that's the best allocation of resources. Um, now, is that trade come this year? Maybe not, right? It just depends on like who becomes available. Maybe Donovan Mitchell becomes available in the off season and then they go and make a push for Donovan Mitchell. However, I don't really think Donovan Mitchell makes sense for the Knicks. I think that they need to, I mean, in a, in a perfect world for the Knicks, like Devin Booker becomes available because the Phoenix Suns continue to be terrible and Devin Booker ends up asking out at some point. That would be best case scenario because in that, I think... Devin Booker defensively, I think would be great. Both sides of the basketball, you got Jalen Brunson. I just, I'm not sold on Jalen Brunson being the best player on a championship contender, right? So I think that they need to go get that other star. Does Joel Embiid become available eventually? Uh, probably not, but maybe, right? Like, I just, I don't know what the big move for the Knicks are. And, you know, yes, they, I do think that they're going to be good. I think they're going to be competitive. I do think OG on Anubi is going to make the Knicks slightly better than Barrett, just because, again, like, Barrett can be hot and cold at times, but and he has progressed a lot, uh, which I think is good for Toronto, but I just don't think Barrett is ever going to be the guy that they need, given that he just, he, he's not going to get the opportunity to flourish with Randall, with Brunson, right? I think OG makes a lot of sense, but now it's just like, the this is your big three of Brunson, OG, and Randall. I just don't think that that's good enough to be a top three team in the Eastern Conference. I think that they're, again, I think that they're better, but I still think, you know, I still think the Bucks, the Celtics, um, you know, Sixers, and they could still make a move. Do they make a bigger quality move? If they make that move, I just still don't see them better than those teams. But I do think the Knicks can slot into that four spot. And you never know, a couple things go your way, right? All of a sudden you're in the, in the, 
conference finals and have a chance to make it to the NBA finals. Right, we've seen stranger things happen. I mean, you look at Atlanta a couple years ago, you know, made it to the conference finals. So I don't think it's like out of the realm of possibility. Certain matchups, right? If you get the proper matchup, maybe. Right? Like there's, I don't want to say like there, there's no chance, no hope, but I think it's very slim. I like the OG acquisition, right? I, I want to start with that. Like I like that they got OG on a newbie. I just, that, that can't be your only move if you want to be a real contender. Now, I will say, uh, Precious, I think that that is something that is kind of going under the radar because, you know, obviously they got OG on a newbie. But I think Precious is a, a Tibbs guy, right? Tibbs loves those kind of guys. Um, I think that he is a guy that can make a real impact. And I think Flynn, I mean, you get a vacuum, a potential vacuum score, right? Maybe he can be something. Maybe he won't. Maybe he could kind of fill some of the, the quickly roll as far as just like the offensive output. That could be interesting, right? Maybe that's the route that they go. Uh, but again, unless the Knicks do something else, I think this was just us. Like, I think you're going from like a, a C plus to a B. Or like a C plus to a B plus type move up, if that makes sense. Um, but moving on to Toronto, right? I actually think Toronto won this trade. I, they didn't get all the draft picks, right? They they were like, we need five first and three star players. We need Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and four first round picks for <laughs> for OG Ananubi. And they finally decided to settle on essentially R.J. Barrett and uh, Emmanuel quickly as well as a second-round pick, but, yeah, second-round pick, we'll see. Um, but I actually like this move. I think, one, I think their expectations for return on OG on Anubi just didn't make any sense. I think quickly now you have your your starting point guard, that guy that can kind of lead the charge. I know, you know, there's they got, like, Dennis Schroeder, but he's probably better in a backup role, serviceable as a backup. Now you got him. Uh, maybe they even look to move him to a contending team, right? That could always be a possibility. You know, you got Dick. I just, again, like, he's developing. You know, I think he, now there's not as much pressure on him. He can come as a backup play to, I just, I, I think now you got basically your point guard and your small forward or shooting guard, if you want to go with Barrett at the two, uh, for the foreseeable future. I think that now Barrett gets the opportunity to kind of be the guy and develop and get the shots and get the opportunity, and we get to really see what R.J. Barrett is capable of and what he can do. I still think that there is a higher ceiling for Barrett. I don't know how high it is, but I do think he can be a more prominent player than he has been. And then quickly, I just think, you know, I mean, look at what he was doing for the Knicks and a somewhat weird role at times. Uh, under Tibbs. I think he'll have more freedom. He'll get more opportunity. Can these two guys kind of turn around uh, the Toronto Raptors? Right? I mean, obviously not like today, but I do think that this is this was the proper move. Now, what is what is the Pascal Siakam trade look like? I think is the big question. Personally, if I'm the Raptors, I'm trying to go get uh, Jonathan Kaminga, right? I'm going, I'm calling the Raptors or the Warriors and going, Hey, let's work out a, a Siakam or a Siakam trade. Right. And now you have, let's say quickly Barrett, Kaminga, Scotty Barnes, and then you could have, you know, Yaka Pirtle for now, or, you know, uh, flip him into like a, a younger center. Right. I just think that that is now you're basically you got your four key guys for the future, right? And and then you still got guys like you know Grady Dick who he can kind of you know he can play the two or three in a backup role or maybe he uh, ends up developing into that he can kind of make some plays so you know maybe you can kind of mold him into a you know a bigger uh, six six kind of combo guard at times um, that could be something that that could work. Uh, you know, Gary Trent Jr., I think that they should look to move Gary Trent Jr. personally. I think he has value. I think some teams would find him interesting. Right, Just hit the full rebuild. Again, if you can get... Can you get like Moses Moody and uh, Jonathan Kaminga, or at least Jonathan Kaminga and some other pieces, right? And now you're, uh, now you're looking at basically your core four for the foreseeable future. I think 
quickly Barrett, Kaminga, right, Scotty Barnes, I think is an excellent four, especially the way that Kaminga is starting to look and starting to come into his own, and he's still extremely on. I think that that could be a very formidable team in the coming years. But Toronto, I think, I, I, I like the move for Toronto, right? It's time to finally start to hit, hit the rebuild. I actually think that they would have gotten more for OG uh, and maybe even Siakam last year than they did this year. But I still think that they managed to get a good return. I'm just more surprised than anything that they actually did the deal, right? It's just like one of those things where it's just like, dude, like you're like two years overdue. Like, come on, get the deal done. So they finally did it. And uh, I think that they, they got two quality pieces that are now going to get just more opportunity, better opportunity, and be able to kind of come into their own, right? I think both of these guys now playing in that that kind of one-two role uh, alongside Scotty Barnes. Scotty Barnes will be the guy, but I'm talking about like now Barrett and Quickly can kind of be the one-two for that Toronto team um, and get that kind of prominent role uh, alongside of Barnes and then whatever other pieces, or if, you know, they play Barrett at three, whatever. But I just think them at the one and two makes sense. You go get that that small forward, that three and D style guy. You, you have Scotty Barnes at the four. You go get that young development center, and now you're off to the races, right? That that would be that would be my thoughts. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Who do they want this trade? Who are you going with? Um, again, I think I think both of these guys, both teams, got a little better, right, for what they need. Um, Toronto being a rebuilding team, but I just I like the deal more for Toronto than I do the Knicks. Now, again, if the Knicks make other moves, do other things, then that could change for me. But I think just this individual trade, personally, I think uh, I think the Raptors. I like the deal for the Raptors. Uh, also, the question is, does this kind of set the market? Because OG didn't go for as much as many thought he would. Right? Don't get me wrong. Quickly and Barrett are really good, really talented players. But OG on Anubi was you know, supposed to go for a haul. And this wasn't like a ridiculous haul. Um, but time will tell. We'll see. You know, If Barrett develops into the guy that many believed and thought he would be, where he's just this just scoring bucket guy that can just go score from anywhere and you know defend on any given night and be a number one or number two guy quickly kind of evolves and continues to be the guy that he's been right and be a quality just athletic uh, starting type point guard. I think that that is very successful uh, for for what they got. But anyway, again, however you feel, let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Helps me know you enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.